Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting list video here at Playing Board Games. Uh, today we're going to be covering irreplaceable level zero cards. These are level zero cards that uh, usually make it, if not always, to the end of our campaign. That's kind of the whole point of like irreplaceable. Uh, we built this one as a group while also putting our own uh, suggestions in and sometimes, you know, someone's going to represent one card, we're all going to represent a card. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Why don't we dive in and start with the Guardian cards, uh, which uh, first one is prepared for the worst. I think we all agreed on this one, that this card just starts in your, your fighter deck and then just doesn't leave because it's so good. Yeah, I'd argue it actually gets better as your deck gets more experience because... Yep. Uh, when you spend five experience on flamethrower, you gotta draw the flamethrower, or else you wasted your experience. Yeah, and this helps you draw the flamethrower. Yeah, that was uh, one of the things in our uh, in our beginners, sorry, the how to win series, right? Just like you're you're paying experience for your big things, and you want to be able to actually play those big things. And prepared for the worst just does that. Yeah, I've cut it twice in the last year. Uh, once Travis got mad at me and I put it back in. Uh, <laughs> and the other time I was playing a Tony Morgan deck, but it has like 10 firearms in it. Yeah, yeah. So was, like... Was that your Joey the Rat deck? Uh, it's a... No, that um, that deck was playing prepared for the worst because uh, the fire... It, that, that had less firearms because mm -hmm. uh, it just had like the big ones. Like okay, I had a typewriter yeah, yeah. and a uh, couple of Berettas. Uh, I'm playing one with my family right now where I'm just playing like the small guns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I was playing prepared for the worst at the beginning and then I realized that it was like literally any other gun in my deck except that I had to pay one more money for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have like a deluge of weapons, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was like, it, there are scenarios that I can see like not wanting to play this, but most of the time it should be in your deck. And I think yeah, they're kinda, few and far between. Yeah, yeah. I think that kind of works with every card in this list. I'm sure someone in the comments can like point to one of these cards and be like, no, this is a reason to take that out. And like, yeah, there is, but the majority, if not all the time, these guys, they make it to the end. So let's check out the next one. Uh, Tetsuo Mori. This guy, he soaks for other players. Uh, and then also when he's when he dies, he searches your deck for an item or their disc, uh, your discard pile from an investigator location. Um, <laughs> it's prepared for the worst again. Yeah, <laughs> prepared for the worst. So sometimes with better. He gets to go through discard piles too. Yeah, yeah, and other people's uh, decks, and he also and takes other people's damage. Decks. Yeah, for other uh, people I, too. I think it's funny that you just finished talking about how these cards all make it to the end because Tetsuo Mori literally never makes it to the end. He dies before the end of the movie. <laughs> that's that's just how it is. Yeah, he just yeah, he freaking goes. Often dies like the first five minutes, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Like he he will never make it to the end of the movie. Yeah, but he's always in my deck come the, come the last scenario. His tagline's perfect too, right? Too noble for his own good. Because like he knows when we put him, when we put mm -hmm. him into play, he's like, they're going to kill me, but I'm going to do my damn job until that happens. Yeah. Uh, on like less jokey notes, this card is fantastic. And like since he's been here, he's like, since he came in the Dream Eaters, which in my head is like, oh, that was the most recent set. But no, it's uh, there's been... Uh, a whole set in between uh, he's just like had such a good home in all of our decks and everyone loves it when someone plays a Tetsuo great card design as well he's just like totally fair but really good mm -hmm. cool alright what's next it is stand together so this one came in the Nathaniel Cho starter deck choose another investigator location both you and that investigator gains two resources Travis I'll let you take the dialogue for this one uh, yes, yeah, so this one is just a economy which uh, Guardians are in desperate need of, and they don't have too, too many other options for generating resources, even at higher levels. And like quite off, like you need money to play things, and you want to play lots of things as a Guardian, so this one usually makes it to the end. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, it also helps other people, which is like... Uh, like emergency cash is also still very good, but just that little boost makes this like a little bit more exciting. But can you guys imagine 
in the days if we had this when we had our mono guardian <laughs> just all of us being be so like much i got your back i got your back i got your back <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be yeah. incredible yeah if you look at this one kind of cross-eyed it does a reasonable impersonation of faustian bargain where you're zero yeah. money and you yeah. get four resources and uh, no you don't curse. have any curse tokens in the bag the yeah. downside is that you always have to pick the option that Two doesn't two. benefit you the most yeah 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 which we we know personal yeah. greed is good <laughs> yeah all right uh next one here is we got beat cop level zero um we know there is a level two version and you know you upgrade pretty commonly but Bryn, you brought up some stuff about this guy so i'll let you take the lead on this one <laughs> yeah um uh, a big part of this is uh that uh, often when i'm playing this card in my deck the part that I want isn't the exhaust to deal one damage to a thing. Well, that is very strong. It is rather that I want an ally that increases my punch because it is the number I intend to use. Mm -hmm. uh, and more often than not, in the early uh, the early stages of a campaign, the experience I'm looking to spend is I'm looking to spend to improve my weapon suite. Uh, like I want my weapons to be better at the thing they do, mm -hmm. and uh, that costs a bit of XP. So B cops upgrade if if it happens, uh, and sure, often enough it it will. Doesn't happen until you know I've got all the rest of my deck sorted out, and sometimes there just isn't XP to upgrade B cop, or you know there's something else that's more important. Yeah. As you've been playing, like you need a bulletproof vest because uh, you're dying, or you know, whatnot. Um, I think also going with the um, kind of like. Part of the intention of this as well was to also feature some cards that are good with the Edge of the Earth Investigators. And B-Cop will help Daniela out, right? Like, she'll now have six. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, at that point, you're kind of going over the top. But, you know, there's no... there's Yeah, there's Jessica Hyde, who is also, like, would be really good in um, Daniela as well. Um, but why not just Charisma and do both, right? Oh my god, yeah. Pizza uh, Vest. Cop is so also real solid video. if you're playing a more punchy Lily Chen. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, it's plus one to the number you use. Mm -hmm. No, I, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that uh, the level two isn't good and you shouldn't upgrade to it. Merely that if that didn't exist, I would still be completely okay with B Cop just being in my deck the whole time. Yeah. Man, I, I had this moment, Bray, when I asked you to take the lead on this one. I was like, because like, you wanted to include this if you were just like, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Throw me under the bus. It's like, all right, Justin. All right, Travis, I'll pass this next one to you. We got to take the initiative. Yeah, this one quite often. Like, I start this card in pretty well every Guardian deck, um, barring Guardians who can play purple. Just having like plus three to your bearing your foot score in the mythos phase is incredible and sometimes it does other things too, but um it's also practice and there's a fair number of yellow or er, blue investigators who can play practice makes perfect, and this is a fantastic to card to include with that. Because you can just throw your practice makes perfect at any test and probably come up with this. Mm -hmm. uh, cause of the wilds. But yeah, no, it is just three symbols. Um Guardians, I find, lack strong skills. Uh, f especially in the Mythos phase, they have some options for dealing with it, but they're usually more about taking on more of a burden rather than mitigating their own burden cards like First Watch, and uh, I'll handle this one. So, uh, yeah, if Take the Initiative like, has an niche, it's, it's entirely possible it, it gets usurped at some point, but for right now, there aren't too many other cards that are as flexible in the Mythos phase for Guardians. Yeah. Sweet. All right, Bryn, these next two um, are their partner. You put them under the same banner, so I'll throw these ones. We got True Grit <laughs> and Something Worth Fighting For. Yeah, yeah, these uh, these two. So largely for these two, it's because there isn't really an upgraded version. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, not that there needs to be. Brother Xavier does both of them at once. <laughs> yeah, but he takes up your ally slot. Yeah. Uh, it's okay, you just throw them away. Yeah. Same as Tetsuo. These, these guys are they're like, they're slotless soak. They can be used to protect other investigators at your location. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I rarely find myself cutting. Like I, I cut through grit a little more often than I do uh, than I do something worth fighting for. Like something worth fighting for is often there for the long haul because I'm playing a blue character and my brain number is like four. And uh, you know, if I take if I take that four, that's it. I'm out. Uh, I get to go sit sit somewhere else and do something else for a bit, play with the cat or whatever, you know. Uh, so, like, well, they are both very good, and your teammates will often be disappointed if you cut trigger it. I, I understand why it might happen. Mm -hmm. But the, the pair of these, like, even if you're only using to protect them, you protect yourself, the better option you have for something that looks almost exactly like this costs you at least 3 XP and doesn't actually get that much better. Uh, if you are using them to protect your teammates, man, there's not much that's actually that much better than this. Mm -hmm. uh, like Travis said, Brother Xavier is pretty good for that purpose as well. So is Tetsuo. Mm -hmm. uh, like these don't take up any of your slots. They're just there. Sick. Yeah, it isn't quite the same. You can also like Solemn Vow for that too, though. Yeah, Solemn Vow is like a little different. Yeah, but it is also guts. Same, yeah, but it is similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the Seeker cards. And Travis, there's no better yeah. person to introduce the first one than you. So who's this guy? Uh, this is Dr. Milan Christopher. He is, takes up your ally slot. Um, sorry, you generously give your ally slot to him in exchange for his services. And he will give you plus one book and all the money you will ever need. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like Jeremiah Kirby, I think, might in contention for this slot but Doc Milan came out in the core set and he's still like the ally I play in most of my yellow decks till the end of the game Yeah, I, a I lot think, of my yellow decks I think with Kirby Milan it depends entirely what you want to do right like if you are a resource hungry deck you'll probably go for Milan if you want cards I think like Kirby's gonna like fit the natural spot first you're gonna be like I want this first because generally cards are better than resources but Dr. Milan's still gonna bring it I think yeah, the other side of it is, like, Kirby doesn't... Like, he gives you cards, but getting cards in yellow is not hard. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, the, you look at your deck and it says, Yeah, sure, take a few, I don't care. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I've played many... I have many, many finished campaign decks that include Dr. Milan. So. If Dr. Milan goes in my deck, he's not leaving. He's, yeah. he's there to stay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of the time I'll spend four experience to include other allies instead of cutting him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one here is we got Shortcut. Uh, strong card. Free movement for anybody at your location. That's strong. It's strong. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, nothing else to say about that one. That one's just great. Travis, what's this one? I don't know, Justin. What you Looks don't? Looks like a practice <laughs> makes perfect. <laughs> uh, it's still hard to read it. Yeah, there's a lot of text know, on this card. card. It can't be good. This card still continues to warp my deck building, where I play a couple <laughs> <laughs> practice skills like yeah. deduction, perception. I'm like, if I include like one, like you know, three or four more practice skills, I can just play practice makes perfect and get double deduction and double perception, and like. And it's always worth it, man. Yeah. It always is. So, um, uh, yeah, like, and there's even, you don't cut this card because there's even just, like, very strong practice cards, like Eye of Truth, that you can upgrade into. Yeah, you, you don't cut ever. You just add more practice cards to make practice makes perfect better. Yeah. Um, one thing as well that a commenter pointed out, which was a great read, um, the, uh, the, the cards in edge of the earth that are practiced the skills that uh gain the symbols in your hand or when you commit it to a test you mm -hmm. can still grab them with practice makes perfect because you only commit the skill test if able so no matter what like even if you whiff um on uh a practiced uh card you uh like it still goes into your hand is that does that seem right yeah it says to commit it if able so like even if you grab like uh, a like 
a non-practice skill that can't be committed on a test, you still get it. So like practice makes yeah, perfect can. in it, my it's mind. It's like subpar, but like you still have to pass a test with the skill card you were looking for. But yeah, but but it means it's less likely to just whiff completely, which is like still nice, right? Like, yep, no, that's that nice. Sweet. All right, what do we got next? Doctor Ellie. Travis, you put this one on the list. I suggest it. You did. Um, she's like real good at finding relics. Um, her competition is Whitney Green, who I feel like quite often gets upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, Doctor Ellie does not have an upgrade version, and, but like if you want, if you're playing high value relics in your deck, like you're probably gonna play her, and she because she finds them and then also just holds them for you, and then when you're done with them, she dies. <laughs> <laughs> And that's like a lot of good things going for you. Yeah. Like if you're looking for ways to dig relics out of your deck, like specifically relics, there aren't too many other better options. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And like going back to uh, Wood and Green, Wood and Green, while powerful, she does get upgraded. They live in different worlds. These t those two, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, she's more about abusing relics, while Wooden's more about giving you a boost and just like making sure your relics like continue to flow. And tomes. Yeah. And tomes. Yep. Sweet. All right. That's true. Next one here is we got crack the case. I think we can all agree on this one. You just basically it's economy. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't cut your economy. Yeah. I I have um, when I, I I have cut crack the case, but only because like I start as like a. In my in, in like a min deck where I'm less skill focused at the beginning and I have a bit more assets and then later on when skills have replaced those assets it leaves but that's like the only case I've ever cut crack the case because like mm -hmm. you don't cut your economy right but when you don't need that economy anymore it can go but that's that's rare if that happens yeah and it's also it distributes as you wish. So, like, it also can help pay for other people. Yeah, yeah. that's, uh, like, I, I would, that's the reason that I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut this one. Like, I could see cutting, like, my emergency caches from a deck if I didn't need the money anymore. Mm -hmm. But crack the case, like, how many yeah, times have like, you ever, you ever given, like, you know, three or four resources away to your blue, ca your blue, or your guardian, or your, whoever's fighting monsters for you, and then had them not be able to use it for something that was really good? I, I don't think the video's gone live yet, but it was the moment when, like, like either, I think Bryn did a Faustian bargain, and Tra Travis is like, can I have some? And Bryn's like, how many? And Travis is like, five. And then Bryn said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that felt really good then. Yeah. I, you know, you just you shoot for the moon. Yeah, oh, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, think it, I think it ended up paying for itself, because I'm pretty sure he drew both the curse tokens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably. No, but, but uh, for this one, like, it's not a question of whether you're going to need the, need the resources, because somebody's going to need the resources. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sweet. Next one here is we got Magnifying Glass Level 1. Bryn, this was yours, so I'll throw this one to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yes, like, the upgraded Level 1 Magnifying Glass exists, and yeah, it is kind of just better in every way. Uh, but, like, it's... But... It's, like, is Also, it? like... Am I upset if I have level zero magnifying glasses in my deck? No. This guy's kind of in the same boat to me as B Cup. Like, if the upgraded one didn't exist, I would still be playing this in almost 100% of the yellow decks I play. Mm -hmm. uh, this card's just kind of absurdly powerful when you stop to think about it. Like, if any other color got an, uh, got an effect like this, like if blue got a card that was one cost fast, took up your relic slot and gave you, or your accessory slot and gave you plus one punch while fighting. Like, how strong would that be? Yeah, that'd be bonkers. Uh, or even if, uh, like, Purple got one that was just plus one spell while, spell while using his spell. Yeah. Uh, that took up a slot that they don't care about. Yeah, and I, I think going with this, too, why, like, I, I, I agree with this, like, level zero, because there's... Back when you just start and you have a limited collection, you'll probably upgrade your magnifying glasses, but now I'm like... Nah. Right. Yeah, there's like other stuff. There's other stuff to do. Sure, if you got like extra experience kicking around and your deck's kind of finished, like mm -hmm. good. And there are there are definitely some like if you're playing hand size, 
upgraded yes. magnifying glass is like really good because sometimes you need that extra card in your hand and you can just have it and mm-hmm. then put your magnifying glass back into play for free yeah uh, but yeah I think I think this card is like absurdly powerful at level zero mm-hmm. uh, and if any other color got anything approaching it there would be uh, yeah it would be like why fantasy flight yeah there'd be riots in the streets yeah yeah all right, next up we hear has got Astounding Revelation. Travis, I'll pass this one to you. Yes, yeah, so this one's like... I mean, you don't play in every single yellow deck because you need some way to search through your deck, but that's becoming more and more common among yellow cards where you just get to search your deck because you know, there's a card that pertains to your archetype or Veska is particularly good for or you just want to find key cards in your deck. And when you do this card, it's just free resources, man. Yeah. God forbid you're actually playing secrets. Yeah, it just um, gets better. Yeah, like, and again, like, it is an economy card, and you don't cut your economy. I'm not sure yeah. I've ever played this card and cut it. No, I never have. No, this, even this card's, it's even good in, like, the off-yellow investigators who can play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, pretty close to every color's got solid ways to search through cards. Mm-hmm. And uh, fun fact: if you're playing, probably like just about exactly rolling banks. Uh, if you play one copy of this card in your deck and you upgrade into Stick to the Plan, when you are searching your deck at the beginning of the game with Stick to the Plan, you get to take the two resources from the card. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Zoe, Zoe can also do that. Yeah, I guess, I guess Zoe Zoe could also do that. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 nice. Just start with seven. Cool. It's like uh, like buying a studios, except that you've got to do it with cards that you actually want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as opposed to just that, yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Rook, this guy, he, like, uh, he's just bonkers. Uh, we're talking about this, like, without the taboo list, and, like, even technically, like, with the taboo list, he still is level zero. He's just chained to cost four. Is that how much he costs? Yep. I think. Yep, yep. Um, but he spends a secret. You look at the top nine cards of your deck. You could do three or six, but just don't. Just do the top nine. You get a draw a card, your, and you also get the bonus of drawing a weakness with that as well and getting it out of your deck so you can choose when to find your weakness, which is a lot better than being surprised by it. Um, he's not going anywhere if he's in your deck because like, he's already apex power for this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, next yeah, up, there's a reason he costs. He's chained. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then our last seeker card is Deep Knowledge. Zero cost. Get, uh, draw three cards. Investigators at your location. Add two cursed, cursed tokens to the chaos bag. Yeah, like this one is not quite as powerful as some of the sil- similar uh, cards and other colors are going to be, but. It's really hard to beat, like, anyone at your location drawing three cards for... Like, Cryptic Research costs four experience, man. And instead of paying four experience, you can, like, spend an action and put two curse tokens in the bag. They really... You can also split it up how you want. Yeah, they, they really unfortunately overestimated <laughs> the um, power of curse tokens. Sorry, underestimated. That's a, no. They overestimated. They thought they were worse than they actually were going to end yeah. up being. Yeah. I do this for four curse tokens. Same with Faustian. I just yeah, probably. You make Faustian, so many. I do it for like six, dude. Yeah, you just make so many tests in the game that like the curse tokens just ended up not mattering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bonkers card. Not as bonkers as Faustian, which we're going to get to. But let's move on to the rogue class, shall we? And the first one here is... Speaking of Faustian bargain. Yeah. Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have you handle this one. So this one is just like the green warder protection. And uh, if you're green, your brain is most likely bad. And if this is in your deck, it's very unlikely that your brain is going to improve enough by the end that taking this out is a good decision. Uh, and rather than that, just saying no to a card, someone else takes it and you gain a resource, seems like a pretty good deal. Plus the flavor of the artwork is on point. 
Oh, but they're yeah. fighting some big monster in the background, and he's just like, I'm going to have a cigarette. I'll be right with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. I think any time we've... Any of us have played a green investigator apart from when Bryn played Dexter recently, we put this in our deck. Because <laughs> yeah. I had that in my first draft, and then I was thinking about it, and I was like, man, who am I going to give cards to, though? <laughs> like, I'm here to fight monsters, and I have five brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What am I scared of? <laughs> yeah, like, hold on. What What exactly? Like, am I giving my ancient evils to Travis so I can be like, oh, why'd you draw that? It's it's just like when you are you go into autopilot, you boot up a deck, I'm rogue, you handle this one, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, next up here, we got Lucky Cigarette Case. Bryn, I'll pass this one to you. Yeah, right on. Uh, so, yeah, this one does have an upgraded version, a level 3 version. But the difference in power, like, they're so very so very different. Like, the, the level 3 is incredibly niche. Or you, like, you know, you're, you're winning lots. And you've got lot like, you finished your deck in record time. and You've got points to spare. Mm-hmm. But the level zero cigarette case, like the reason, one of the reasons that I would choose not to be playing this card or not to have this card in my deck anymore is also like in this list. And the only out, the second reason I can think of is because you want to play Garot Wire. Um, but why? Yeah, you know, why not both? Mm-hmm. Why not both? Uh, Lucky cigarette case yeah. is just uh, like you're you're pretty much drawing a card every turn. Uh, for the investment of two resources, a card, and, and your necklace slot. It's just good. I remember when you played this in a Dexter. Not Dexter, sorry, Rex. Rexter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a wild. Oh, uh, yeah. That was gross. Uh, just sitting there, like, I'd like to succeed every test, but let's do more, please. Yeah. Uh, All right, next uh, one here. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, that, that, that card is just, it's it's good. Yeah. Even in Innsmouth, where your cigarettes, should, you shouldn't be able to light your cigarettes because you're underwater water half the fucking yeah. time. You find a way. Yeah, you figure it out. All right. They're lucky. It's lucky. They're dry still. Exactly. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, next up here is Faustian Bargain. Five resources distributed as, as you wished, wish for the cost of an action and two curse tokens. It's not going anywhere in your deck. It's just so good yeah same same reasoning as crack the case even if you no longer need the resources Mm -hmm. there is no possible world that you will not have someone on your team who you can't just be like here's five resources knock yourself out kid buy buy yourself something nice yeah uh they won't be like oh man i could buy all kinds of nice things yeah yeah card's wild I'm starting to get. I'm, I'm closer to the edge of being like, "Fuck you, <laughs> Faustian bargain." <laughs> All right. Look, I will yeah, probably there. never. I will probably never get there because it's a green card, and we don't usually get the stupid ones. Yeah, you usually don't get this power level. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> is is Prince like? Is this legal? <laughs> All right. Um, Bryn, this next one has you written all over it. Oh, I wish it was a card that just said Bryn, 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 Bryn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so obviously you're not playing the Crystallizer of Dreams in every single deck you ever play we're going to start with that Mm -hmm. secondly if you have chosen to put it in your deck it will still be there at the end of the the campaign Uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of possible uses for this one in pretty close to every color there are all sorts of events that have ridiculous icons on them because they're like, yeah, you could discard this for three bunch, but don't. That's a bad idea. You could just pay for it. Yeah. Uh, Crystallizer of Dreams lets you lets you have your cake and eat it too. You know, you get to play the event, you get to do the cool thing, and then you get to commit it for its sweet symbols. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I, I I like this card a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we a little too much, some might say. <laughs> do you, would you like it more on par or less than I like Peter Sylvester? Uh, I mean, like, so the only green deck I've played recently 
I guess two two. I played like a Tony Morgan deck that also isn't playing this card. Mm -hmm. It's not playing events either. And like the current Dexter Drake, which admittedly it very easily could have been played in because the, the Guardian of the Crystallizer only cares about you as long as you're still holding the Crystallizer. Yeah, you're like, huzzah! <laughs> it's like, oh no! It was in your hand the whole, check your pocket. Yeah. And it's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have definitely bent several decks out of shape to play with this card. Yeah. We all have one. We all have yeah. one. All right. Last rogue card is Nimble. So uh, it gives you a foot, and for each point this skill test succeeds by, after resolves, you may immediately move to a connecting location to a maximum of three. I recently played with this card for the first time, and it is bonkers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very good. No, nimble, nimble brings the noise. Yeah. And like, there's just nothing else that really does what this does like that. So you're just gonna keep it in there, and you're gonna be happy. Yeah, about it. it's just a, it's a lot of move actions in mm -hmm. a not move action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have the uh, that pesky max one committed per skill test text on it. So you oh, can actually yeah. just be sitting in the basement of the asylum and evade an enemy there, and you're just gone. That's it. You're in the wind. Wow, yeah. Bryn, Bryn's building his contingency plans for all those. He's like, all right, Nimbles. That's another one. Yeah. Bryn's like, no, they spawn Nimbles an enemy. Good. Bryn's like, okay, I use the ethereal slip when the guest we did not kill spawns at the exit. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sick, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I spend a lot of time thinking about how to resign without dying. <laughs> yeah. Is it because, did you think about that while you were locked in the asylum? Uh, the first time I played with Nimble, I was uh, playing Carcosa. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Travis, start the Mystic class off with a bang. Here you go. Hey, it's promised power. Uh, four symbols is a lot. And you have to put a whole one curse token into the bag. <laughs> what a what a price to pay yep. for power. Actually, this just like lets anyone at your location pass a test. Yeah. <laughs> and um, like even scaling up the high experience cards, there aren't many other cards that do that. You have to mm. pay five experience for seal the other side. Like. You can, but like, just play alongside this because there's probably a worse card in your deck. Yeah. I was about to say for a second, I was like, oh my god, Travis, no, you love that card, but then you like, play it on the side. Okay, that's good, that's good. We I still both. love that card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, even when the symbols are broken, like, you know, half and half, four symbols is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Promise yeah. of Power, it's also on that Faustian bargain slip where I'm like, I hate that I have to I have to play this card. And you might be in YouTube and say like Justin, you don't. No, I have to. You don't understand. The card's good. <laughs> you gotta. Next up here we got Holy Rosary. This can also be um lumped together with uh the pendulum and the uh Saint Hubert's key. And uh, just the thing that bumps up your brain when you are a mystic. You need to do that. That's yeah. kind of your thing. Yeah. Pretty much. The, the entire thing about the color is that you get to use brain instead of your other numbers oftentimes. And yeah. uh, why not more brain? Yeah, why not more brain? Uh, Just more, please. Yeah. Pretty much. All right. Brent, I'll throw Plus this it next. also soaks you horror, which you probably forfeit in order to play your arcane research. It's or true, whatever. yeah, it is. <laughs> it's called... Stupid arcane research. <laughs> uh, Bryn, I'll throw this one to you. I got the sword cane. Yeah, this card's just really cool. Um, it's like getting to include an evade spell in your deck, only you don't have to commit any sort of a slot to it, or even pay for it until you know that you need to evade a thing, like mm -hmm. right now. Because the action you spend to play it is also, like, you get to fire it once for free. 
So, you know, why not? Yeah. Uh, um, plus, it's also a relic, so occasionally you get to kill those sometimes pesky ghosts with it. And even if they took most of their damage through bullets, they still die. <laughs> Um, I, I really like Sword Cane too. If it's it's not, it doesn't go in all my Mystic decks because like sometimes you just don't need to worry about it. But like if you're play, if I if I'm playing Gloria, this is in there immediately and it doesn't ever leave because like it just makes it so that you can like do things on your own. Uh, and like if you find like an acolyte or a rat, you can just like no get out of here. You don't even need to evade it. You can actually literally just kill it. And exactly what Bryn says, this can just stay back in your hand for when you need it. Uh, even something like someone like a uh, Norman Withers, like I'll take this as like one of my five um, level zero purple cards that I can take, right? Because I'm planning to get into Water Protection two in the future, so I don't need to like grab those right now. Um, and uh, he's just—it's just like it's just really efficient at what it does. I, I I don't like the card because I feel like it it dips into this should be a green card. But um, if, if I'm going to play it as a purple card because that's what it was printed as. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, if you're playing Dexter Drake, this card is the coolest thing ever, man. Yeah, you, you have uh, proved that it's very good with Dexter. It's so cool. Uh, Travis, I'll throw this one to you. Yeah. Hey. Right. That's David Renfield. Uh, you'll notice a common theme with these is you don't cut your con mean. That's what this guy does. Just take up your ally slot. Um, and occasionally, like, you buy other allies in purple at higher levels, but usually you just keep David Renfield in to, you know, give you seven-ish resources, and then you push him off cliff and play your good ally. Mm -hmm. It's just good. He's too money, so it takes you, like, on your second turn, you get to generate value from him. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to give you plus one brain for a couple rounds, and then he'll take some combination of two hearts and one brain. I think, it, I think it takes until the third activation for him to start generating positive value because he costs you a card from your hand and an action to play. Yeah, but, I mean, like strictly resources. Yeah, yeah, like to be resource positive. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the, the second uh, the second activation he has paid for himself. But at the same time, yeah. too, in addition to that, on the first activation, you're now also getting plus one brain out of him, right? So, yes. like, he, he really, like... That's fair. He pays you back in different ways as you go, right? And... <clears throat> He's still... I don't know, Justin, plus one irrelevant stats worth, like, a single resource, apparently. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that it is, he, it is he a true is, yellow. He's magnifying yeah. glass. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yep. He costs I usually one. keep this guy in my decks for the purpose of making my teammates sweat. It Honestly, uh -huh. I, I know, like, you guys are very good at the game, but... Anytime you play David, I panic a little bit inside. I'm like, <laughs> you know, just because the dude's shady, man. He's a shady dude. Mm -hmm. All right, next one, nice and simple. YouTube, say it with me. Uncage the soul. Don't cut your economy. And then, in addition, especially when it's guts. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much all there is to say about this one. Yep. Uh, yep. These next two, we are, they're kind of like a, they're, they're a pair. We got Read the Signs and Spectral Razor. They both cost two. They both add your brain to an investigate or a fight action. They deal extra damage, get extra clues. Spectral Razor also engages and deals even more damage if they're not elite. Um, these cards, for me, if they're, they're in my deck, they're there until the end. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've even got they're like their spells. Uh, they do enough, especially especially the the knife hands. Like there are so many non elite enemies in the game that have three or five health as the factor that makes them difficult to kill. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. spectral razor is just like, eh, what if you what if you were just dead though? Yeah, How about that. And like read the yeah. signs, read the signs got some neat uh, it's got some neat flavor text on it. It's rarely relevant, but when it is, you feel real cool. Yeah, I remember Travis did that in one of our distance recordings, and he was just like, I'm a baller. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look at this shit I just did. Yeah. Yeah, pure power. All right, Bryn, I'll pass this one to you. 
ritual candles. So if you're like me, I don't know, maybe four years ago, you think, these cards just suck. <laughs> Why would I want to play this? And the short answer is that you're looking at it wrong. You're not playing this to get plus one to your skill values. What you're playing this for is to make every symbol token in the bag, of, well, every one of the standard symbols in the bag, one easier. You know, how many how many scenarios have you played through where they're like, the the thing is like it's it's a minus three, but also if you fail, Burmore Doth attacks you. <laughs> well, well, that's that's only one, two, I've only played one scenario like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you're right. There is only there's exactly one scenario like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the point the point stands. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many scenarios where uh, one of the tokens will have uh, if you fail text that is just kind of brutal. And uh, some of them even reveal extra tokens, and I'm not entirely certain how that works because I haven't read the FAQ on this. Uh, but I think if you reveal a, like a cultist token and the cultist token says reveal another token and then you reveal a, a skull token... You get plus two. I think you get plus two. Yep, I would agree. Because uh, it doesn't exhaust and it's you know it's just a reaction effect. Yeah, it turns it into a half-blessed token. Yeah. If I'm wrong, you know, YouTube will definitely say... I, just, I don't see how you are. That makes sense. Uh, but even, even if you're not, you know, like the difference between the skull being a minus three and a minus two, like you were planning to beat minus two anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This card is very strong. I know Travis disagrees with me, uh, and that's okay. Well, that's just because Travis hates candles. Yeah, they always, they bug my nose. They smell bad, <laughs> even the ones that don't have smells. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think just like for it, for its cost, at its level, there is nothing that does anything even approaching this. Uh, and there isn't really something that you could upgrade into that would have this effect. Uh, I really like these cards. Sweet. All right, Brent, I'm going to keep the ball on your court because we're going to go on to Water Protection level zero. Oh, yeah. So fair, fair is fair. This one usually does end up becoming like a level two or a level five or something, no matter what sort of a campaign you're playing. This one's mostly here because at level zero, it's quite strong. And some inve there are literally not quite half a dozen investigators who have uh, access to this card, but not the other ones. Yeah, it's like four-ish. I think we, we counted three, but there might be one we missed. Um, yeah. Anywho. There should be an iteration of Ward of Protection in your deck at the end of the campaign. Uh, if it's the level zero one, it's, it's kind of fine. You could do far worse. This is another thing that Travis disagrees with. But. Uh, can I <clears throat> raise a hand and just say I often forget that level 5 water protection exists? Um, yeah, no, that's completely uh, that's, fair. Uh, yeah. It is very fair. The level 2 one is like the good one. Yeah, to me, I'm like, level 2 water protection? <laughs> there it is. The only version I of the I think it depends, uh, it depends on the player count. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're 2 or less, man, 5 is good. Yeah. I think level uh, two is still better if you're playing with two people. Yeah, if I have the chance to support my friends, I mean, you guys know that I'll always take that choice. <laughs> well, it's yeah, not like supporting your friends. It's like, so level five is like, it it it's only I'm you. Generous and like assume that there's like the the mythos deck is fifty percent monsters, fifty percent treacheries, right? So you mm -hmm. double your odds of hitting something one hundred percent. Whereas, uh. Like the level two one also doubles your odds of hitting a crippling tre treachery because yeah. even with one other person. Yeah, and when I say and supporting then it, my it friends, it also costs three less experience. Yeah, yeah, which is which is which is pretty big. And when I say supporting my friends, I mean like it's the versatility that comes with it. The fact that you can defend yourself and other people from treacheries is to me yeah. better than just killing an enemy. That's I'm playing purple. I have ways to deal with things that like that deal with my enemies as well. Right. Yeah, the other the other thing 
that uh, the five does that the two doesn't? Is it each surge? It each surge, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's which, fair. Which so is... like in, in a lower player count, like oh, it can be. Or if you uh, like surge yeah. cards, but yeah, it's not. If nothing. you've got a smaller collection, maybe you want to upgrade to your level five ward of protection, so then one of your teammates can play the level two. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I will. I will concede that uh, level five is a little more niche. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it does commit for an extra symbol though, oh, which is cool. cool. What's what symbol? Oh, it's a brain. Oh, just a just a let just a five experience yeah. guts count me out. Five experience guts. <laughs> no deal. All right. Let's uh, go to survivors here, which is resourceful. Uh, if this skill test is successful, choose a survivor card not named resourceful in the discard pile and add the chosen card to your hand. Um, cards great. Cards very. It, the reason why you don't upgrade this card is because when you upgrade your other survivor cards, you're essentially just adding another version into your deck, kinda, sorta, right? Because you're gonna be, you're aiming to now play those good cards twice, right? Or in addition, you have like, there's that new um, card in Edge of the Earth, which just like mills 10 off the top and puts it into your discard pile. So now you have access to those cards immediately. Um, or, you know, you just play a bunch of luckies with this. Like, it's just, Resourceful's really good. And you also can just, you can grab whatever Survivor card is best for you in the moment when you're playing playing it. And yeah. mm-hmm. nothing replaces that effect. Like, nothing does. So it's going to be there from beginning to end. If you have the Survivor cards to run it. Which you probably will for the majority of the people who can play this card and Survivor cards. Yeah. Uh like even if you can't pass one of these tests on demand mm-hmm. it guaranteed one of your teammates can yes yeah uh, if they can't you're playing a real weird comp and uh, i would like you to send it to me yeah because uh, <laughs> <'cause> Bryn's <laughs> like i have a suggestion yeah, like, post, for our next series <laughs> post, post it in the comments if you got you got a yeah. cut a team comp that you think will work without passing any tests ever uh, or like reliably yeah. passing tests reliably yeah. passing tests yeah. Uh, Travis, why don't you take this next one? Sure. Strack shoes. Um, I don't play too, too many red characters, but this is easily my favorite one of card. Um, whenever, like, it's very rarely integral to your deck working, but there's lots of investigators that appreciate have it, either having plus one foot or being able to make a consequentless test every turn or um, having free move action every turn. Yeah. This is like, this does a lot of things for a level zero card. Yeah. Yeah, it, it turns on a card that we're going to see later in this list. Um, like, that just, like, makes it, like, just pure value. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it is exactly what you said, Travis, because as a one of that's it makes it so that you really don't need to replace it because it exists for its one purpose. And if you draw it, it'll help you. But if you'll be fine, if you don't draw it, it's not like dependent. Your deck's not dependent on your track shoes. And if it is, yeah, play two. Yeah, play two. <laughs> uh, fantasy flight. Uh, do you guys think we could get like some sort of shoe knife? Green. Oh. That would be cool. I would nah, he doesn't get cool things. <laughs> they don't get cool things. He's not wrong. Sorry, Bryn, the Council of Seekers have spoken. <laughs> Only sometimes get cool things. Yep. Be realistic. You guys, if you're lucky, you'll get like a pen knife that lets you... Uh, it's fast to play and costs one to play, and you can attack with it for like plus one bite and no extra damage, and then as an action, you can use it to resign. Just got the word sign and it's a pen. <laughs> Look at that. All right, next one here is we got um, Lucky, level zero. So you guys all know what Lucky is. It's when you would fail a skill test, you get plus two to that skill test. Wow. Um, This one you might be asking, hey, it's kind of weird that you put this here when there's a level two and a level three version of Lucky. However, Bryn Bryn brought up a good point while we were doing this, is that... um, if you don't have access to level three lucky, it's very likely that your level zero luckies are gonna stay level zero luckies because 
there's better things to spend your experience on and like lucky level zero is like very good as is right like the extra card draw is not really enough now it was when we were just starting right but now it's not when you have a bigger collection it's not as important as other things yeah. that can help you get there yeah yeah also in the early days we would often plan out who uh like the, the person playing the red primary wouldn't actually get to play level zero lucky yeah yeah i remember that because someone playing off class would be playing the level zero lucky so then the red player would upgrade into their luckies it's, but uh yeah when we used to all play with travis's collection yeah and now, when we I, all we used to play yeah and i don't yeah. want to think about how much money the three of us have given fantasy flight <laughs> yeah <sighs> yeah but uh yeah, like the, sure, the level three one is real cool, mm -hmm. but it's also again like not a priority upgrade, right? Like level level zero lucky is still a very powerful card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with it. Uh, next up here, Bryn, I'll pass this one to you. Meat cleaver. Oh, the meat cleaver. Uh, yeah. So this uh, this one. Like, obviously not every red character wants to play this card. Mm -hmm. Not even every character with access to red cards wants to play this card. However, if you want to fight and you have access to level zero red cards, this card's really good. Um, like, in order to get plus two on a melee weapon without a limited number of uses or the possibility of it just breaking, it has to be level two or higher. This gives it to you at level zero, and sure, it is a little dangerous, and it is like a little bit worse for fighting big enemies because you got to take the damage more than once. You got access to red cards, so you can probably mitigate that pretty easily. Uh, and then this this uh, weapon is kind of uh, kind of just a mid grade uh, mid grade melee weapon, but you didn't spend XP on it. Yeah, I've definitely finished campaigns playing playing Will Yorick where I've got meat cleavers and like blackjacks and that's my weapons. Mm -hmm. like I haven't spent anything else on it and I don't have to because meat cleavers are real good. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, and that's why it's here. Uh, next up, we got Stunning Blow. This one I wanted to put on the list. I've recently um, kind of fallen in love with this card. Um, it... it it just does a lot more than you like would think that it does just by reading it. Like it really plays so well in practice. Like the art's fantastic, and I have to thank Bryn for like bringing this to the table because uh, it's because of him that Travis and I noticed it and like we're like, oh, okay, this is actually working pretty well. And then playing it in my Silas deck in uh, the Innsmouth Conspiracy was just it was it's very strong. Um, and I think now, whenever Stunning Blow finds a way, it usually realistically only finds a way in as a one of if in my, my fighter because, like, it's good, but I really don't find the need for two. But as a one of, this, like, does a lot of work. And then you play your Resourcefuls, and now it's, it's a two of, right? Um, and, you know... That, that's the look on my face when I draw this card, that lizard. I'm like, Poggy, <laughs> let's go. It's a stunning blow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is this is like the card that Handcuffs wishes it were. <laughs> like, you get to evade with your punch, but you also just get to you know, put points on the guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's the putting points on the guy because you don't, like, it's not its own thing. You use it with a weapon, so you're putting damage on the guy and basically just being like, I don't need to solve this problem this turn. I can deal with something else. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of holes this card can dig you out of. Yep. Uh, and it just kind of does it well. Yeah, it's just good. Yeah. All right, Travis, I'll throw this one to you. Yeah, this is drawing then. This is another technically level zero card, <laughs> where it will provide your deck's entire economy on its own. That's it. You just do stupid tests because you get to draw two cards or. Or you get to draw a card or gain two resources, or if God forbid, both of them. You can gain four resources for like a failed investigation check or something dumb. Mm -hmm. 
And this is where going back to track shoes, why that like inconsequential test is nice because you can just like turn it into resources or a card. Yeah, this is one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, next up, Bran, I'll give you rabbit's foot. After you fail a skill test, you get to exhaust it and draw a card. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're playing this card with drawing then, <laughs> like how many cards can you draw off of a failed test? There's a lot of tests you can fail that don't really do anything to you. Yep. Uh, and sometimes you will just fail tests that you weren't trying to. That will happen. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And this card just is kind of like, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. We'll keep. Uh, we'll keep. We'll keep on trying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like cigarette case, there's a level three version, but not everyone's going to have access to it. And if rabbit's foot's in there as your like zero to two survivor, it'll probably stay there. Assuming you, because it's in your deck, you probably don't need another accessory slot filled because that's the one you want. Yeah, but you could buy Relic Hunter, so then you have two Rabbit's Feet. Let's go. Now yeah. you just cover all your bases. One is the Rabbit's Foot, one is Cigarette Case. <laughs> no matter what... what, what? Oh, oh, man. Succeed that's, by that's zero? It. Frick! <laughs> this, this deck builds itself, Justin. You're playing Cigarette Case, you're playing Rabbit's Foot, you're playing those two new Soak cards that heal themselves when you fail or succeed. Oh, how many accessory slots is that? <laughs> Oh, man, it's so many more than you're allowed. Yeah, Bryn's like, we don't worry about yeah. the rules we when we're building decks We here. don't think about the little problems like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last survivor card is we have Mariner's Compass. Uh, three cost, you exhaust it and investigate. If you succeed and have no resources, you discover an additional and up to three times during an investigation using it. You can spend a resource to get plus one book. Um, this is just, like... If you want to be a survivor that's getting clues, this is going to be in your deck and it's never going to leave. Um, this one also works like really well without things like Dark Horse. Like you, you see this one and you think Dark Horse. Well, yes, it does good in Dark Horse. You don't really need Dark Horse for this thing to do its work. Because as soon as you get other books like Mariner's Compass, maybe you're like doing this weird thing with the guiding spirit who's telling you to go over there to find some clues. Um, now you like can like just spend a resource get the thing going grab a few use your drawing thing to refill those resources on another on another action later in there and it's just like it's gonna provide you just enough value throughout the game that it's n unlikely gonna get cut as the clue for survivor it's not something like fire axe where um i don't know i just feel like fire axe and mariner's compass are different yeah. in terms of an irreplaceable level zero card. Yeah, I mean, like, two two damage with a plus two mm -hmm. gets outclassed much quicker than just discovering an extra clue every turn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the first time I played this game with my brother, he was playing a Mariner's Compass Dark Horse Rex Murphy deck, <laughs> and it was, like, kind of gross. Oh, that's dirty. Uh, oh, my yeah. God. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, no, he, would, he, was, he was like, I'm going to spend one action investigating every turn, and that's it. But it's cool, because I'll get all the clues. <laughs> yeah. It's juicy. All right. We can finish thing out, this thing off with one neutral card. It's irreplaceable. It's emergency cash. While not every deck will need it, and some decks will cut it, the majority of the time, emergency cash does provide enough value to continue to the end. And the important words are don't cut your economy. Of course, you know, this is outclassed by other things, but in the deck that needs it, which is still a very big chunk of decks, emergency cash will continue to do its job. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's also, also got this neat little supply thing going on where you yep. can find it with a backpack. Yep. Uh. Yeah, well... That was a that was a video and a half. Oh my god! I hope you guys yeah, it was all. A long one. It was. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we'll just go through this one nice and quick. You know, a nice little list video. Um, but no, we gave you guys. We know some of you guys really like the long videos, so we're happy that we got to do this one for you guys. Um, thanks for watching. I got to quickly go to the Patreon splash page. That's something I need to burn into me. Thank you to all of our patrons for supporting this video and also everything else we do. If you want to support it, follow the instructions over there and go down there to find uh, the description uh, and see uh, the link to our Patreon page, as well as you can like, subscribe, comment, 
what are your thoughts on these level zero cards? Do you have any other ideas for level zero cards that to you are irreplaceable? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember, if you have those comps that win by not succeeding tests reliably, Bryn wants to hear them, so don't forget about sending those down in the description. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.